Hello, Father Redacted. I wanted to write to call attention to a couple of things that are very important for the salvation of the members of the community at Redacted that I have noted of late. One, I have heard from the children and the family that they are learning in catechesis class that the road that leads to heaven is wide and many are those who find it. And the road to hell is narrow and few are those who end on it. This is an inversion of Matthew 7.13. Through a deceptive and insidious twisting of the text, they have turned it on its head. There are many other verses in the scripture that are ignored or thwarted through the same verbal gymnastics, as well as the continuous and clear teaching of the church through all the ages. In fact, when I corrected this false doctrine in the hearing of some of the students, clear and deep conversions almost immediately followed. More than one of the teens are now going through conversions. As you know, I have been attending Mass at Redacted less often, but when I have attended, I have experienced the doctrine focusing on familial and social wellness instead of the message of repent and believe in the gospel. We are assured that all our relatives will be reunited with us in heaven, for example. Love those God has given us. Trust in His mercy. Don't worry. While the full gospel is preached, minus admonitions concerning the danger of the loss of salvation, which should be central, a deep focus is on familial, social, and personal wellness. If you do not think these doctrines are being taught, please take the time to discuss it with me before dismissing this letter. I am confident that these false teachings are dangerous to the eternal salvation of the congregants, as well as to you yourself. While they are in fashion currently, they fulfill the words of Scripture and the saints that the false doctrines of the end times will be antinomian, teachings that tickle the ear. The teachings are effective at settling the hearts of the aged and affluent congregants and effective at reducing complaints by keeping families that are comfortably far from God away from convictions that would lead them to their repentance. But these doctrines do little to attract the next generation. And if they did attract them, what would they be coming to? I believe that you are teaching what you believe to be correct, that peace and concord are more important than the gut-wrenching sword that Christ said he came to bring, the fire that tries all of a man's deeds, causing him to suffer loss as base and materials are conflagrated. But in fact, the heart of Christ's message is repentance and watchfulness, mentioned more than 100 times in the Gospels and more than 90 from the lips of Christ. I am convinced that I am correct on these points. I don't think it is hard to discern when one has read the history that the church was born first in a savior who rose in Second Temple Judaism, steeped in quasi-dualistic and eschatological teachings about good and evil, heaven and hell, and the dangers of the loss of salvation. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We are not first a church of the Psalms or of Israel at the time of Moses, but a church from the Judaism at the time of Christ. Even the most secular of scholars would agree with this argument. Christ was an eschatological Messiah preaching repentance for the possibility of admittance in the imminent kingdom of God. And I believe that God has blessed the timeless doctrine of our church with the fruit of success and life. It has overtaken the world. Only now is it waning. But the doctrine is a doctrine of good and evil. It is a doctrine of a perilous walk with a very real and highly likely end in damnation. We should pray in fear and trembling for our relatives who have died, as well as those who are soon to die. If you would like to discuss with me more, elucidate me, I am open. I have deep affection for you. You are an extremely important part of my life since redacted and of my entire extended family. And you are very close to my heart. And I know that you are close to the hearts of my children and my wife and my brothers and sisters and their children. I understand you get letters like this often. I understand how brazen and presumptuous this appears to you. Though I expect you keep with you the ideal that I suffer from certain deficits. And so you can understand it a little bit better from that vantage point. Whatever it is, it is from the depths of my being honest. And I fully support what I am saying here. I would be happy to discuss in person more if you'd like. Though this false doctrine is effective at settling agitated, rebellious spirits in our community and in all communities, this truly is a call to repentance I am making to you to stop teaching this doctrine, which is destroying the faiths of many around us. The silence about the true gospel is blessings for the legions of hell. 
The stakes are high for those you are pastor over, as well as for yourself, though I do believe you are acting in good faith. I have deep affection for you, and from my positioning, from my optics, this is the kindest thing I could do for you. I know you are intelligent, deeply reflective in your thinking, and so I think you will take this admonition in something approaching the best light possible. Thank you, and with deep affection, your brother.